Alex Answer here. It is November 2nd, 2016. Not only can you go off grid, you can be the media while actually living off the grid, but there's actually a process. And there's things that I'm going to explain as simply as I can. Let's just say I was giving advice to someone else that was trying to do the same thing. Now, where we'll start a conversation, of course, is the internet. And one of the reasons why I need more power, more power. One of the reasons why I need more power, and I'm looking for some solutions in my own life to this power dilemma, is because this modem takes 90 watts of power, and that is, that, that's a fair amount of juice. When it's after hours and the sun's gone down and you only have a few golf cart batteries, which is what I have. Now, fortunately, when I had uh, them checked out recently, only one of them was fried because I knew something was wrong. And what I've learned is when you're in an RV, things happen. Wires get loose. And when important wires get loose that are connecting both the batteries and you're in an RV or you plug in, and you, you, know, you, you have a false sense of power because you have grid power. Arch. And then you forget about monitoring your actual levels with your actual solar. Some of you know what I'm talking about. If you actually have had a, a solar setup and some deep cycle batteries or some golf cart batteries. And the reason why I use golf cart batteries now is because they have more amp hours. You get more bang for your buck, if you will. And it's important to keep them topped off. And I, I have failed miserably at, at the basics of of battery maintenance. So now a couple years into uh, my off-grid experience going from mobile to actually settling down somewhere, uh, I'm still housing the golf cart batteries in the RV. The solar panels are, are not on the fancy stand that automatically rotates with the sun. Uh, that is something that you see off-gridders have in their possession in some cases. And, uh, you know, even people that live impoverished off the grid, I've seen them with the automatic, you know, uh, solar tripod where it moves. <laughs> you know, as the sun moves, the position of the panels actually move. Mine, in fact, are actually mounted to the top. So what I'm going to explain is how I'm basically getting by with what I have. And financially, I've gotten by with the very basics. I'll also talk about... Uh, some of the uh, potential upgrades that I think are beneficial and the importance of actually researching a product before you buy it lest you buy a piece of crap that actually doesn't really last very long. So we'll talk about all those things and more. So I went to um, a local auto place to have both my batteries tested and like I said only one of the six volt golf cart batteries was fried and my friend John in the San Luis Valley. He drove me to a place in Pueblo. And there's a place in Pueblo, Colorado, where you can get golf cart batteries for about $100 a pop, which is apparently a lot cheaper, you know, than, uh, than a lot of places. So I took one in, one of the batteries, one of the cells in, you know, and, and so they knock a little bit off when you bring in the old battery. And I got a new one. And so basically whatever I was doing before, I mean, when I would run the gas generator trying to figure out why my batteries weren't taking a charge. So, you know, I really need to get this battery thing down and figure out what's going to be, you know, the most effective for me long term and what it is that I'm uh, needing the power for. And, you know, it's really simple. I have a couple computers. I have a Mac and I have a PC. And I just ordered some uh, backup laptop batteries for the HP laptop. And so that's really going to come in handy when I have that in my possession in the next uh, couple of weeks. The modem is 90 watts. And if I, if I go out periodically in the night and I charge a generator or I charge up the batteries by starting up the gas generator which by the way I have in my RV because I'm no longer asleep in the RV, I'm in the shed, the 10 by 12 with the loft built up uh, on top of this office area where I'm seated at the moment, where my desk is. I'm kind of using the RV as kind of a, a temporary housing 
if you will, to muffle the sound of the generator, you know, because I do have neighbors and I, I want to be as quiet as possible where I can on my end. And generators, it's one of those things, it could be really, really annoying. Now, I happen to be in a neighborhood where there's a number of neighbors that have their generators going at all hours of the night, really. You know, it's just wanting to cut back on some of that noise. But that is basically how I'm going to be able to operate at night until I'm able to make additional upgrades and when it comes to upgrades we're talking about power packs that are separate from the main solar system and there are several different types I've actually been looking at several different models and I'm, I'm glad I I didn't buy anything yet because it's actually more important now for me to save up for winter you know have some extra money on hand for some food if I need it gotta make those land payments it's at least several hundred per month you know, so so now that I've spent, you know, a fair amount this year, including the down payment for the land, the monthly land payments, several thousand dollars for the shed, then having the loft built in the shed that I can, you know, where I can sleep and have my office down below, and, uh, you know, getting some extra food, ordering some quinoa on eBay, you know, getting some LED lights, you know, got myself a, a wood stove recently, haven't found the piping for it, but I've... It, it's a wall tent stove. It's it's more of a discount, cheaper wood stove. You know, so just just acquiring things here and there. Earlier in the summer, water containers, seven gallons here, seven gallons there, water containers, and then of course the big box stores start selling the uh, the 15 gallon blue cylinder looking water containers. You know, so it's just acquiring, you know, one thing at a time. So, you know, I'm just marveling at even though, you know, I've only had so much to work with, I have just enough power to come to you at night. So with those additional laptop batteries coming for the laptop, I may be able to bypass the upgrade for now, but it's still in my sights. So we'll talk about that. The uh the power packs in a bit but just using the gas generator directly on the golf cart batteries both of which technically work because they've been checked out recently I need to of course start checking each of the batteries with the voltmeter and I'm plugging everything and I'm not quite at that level but you know battery maintenance is something that I that I want to take seriously and like I said when you're in the same place and you're not moving all the time you know, going from place to place, there's less likelihood of the, the batteries getting loose and something unsavory happening. You know, when you're not plugging into the grid, but you're actually having to watch it on a on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And it is good to watch it. And one other thing that goes is fuses. So having extra fuses on hand, and, you know, I'm basically trying to have everything on hand that I need to get through this winter. So two golf cart batteries... 400 watts of solar mounted and if there was a way I could upgrade that you know I would uh, add a 100 watt solar panel to my system uh, but it wouldn't be mounted it would be you know positioned so when the sun rises it's positioned to catch the sun you know when the sun sets it's positioned to catch the sun setting and I also probably should upgrade the uh, charge controller to something that can actually handle more solar panel inputs you know the one I currently have right now I, I definitely think it needs an upgrade and these upgrades may have to wait until spring and I'm okay with that even the uh, the backup power there's a couple different options models that I was looking at and it's important to read reviewers or read the reviews down on Amazon some of them are copy paste and get an idea if it's a product that actually lasts and so the goal zero it's actually, uh, you know, it, it can take a solar charge, but it also takes like, you know, a day or a day and a half, you know, if you have it plugged in to get a full charge. And some of the reviews were not so good. Some of them claim that the, um, you know, the Goal Zero solar power generator, the Yeti 150, which I was looking at, which ran about 200 bucks, buyer beware. 
you know and so a friend said instead of buying the higher end lithium batteries these devices that have far less amp hours than the golf cart batteries or larger 12 volt batteries you know a friend of mine suggested to stay with these lead based batteries you know for full time off grid use you know and so perhaps I'll wait on these uh, these backup power units then again there are the ones on Amazon for about a hundred hundred and fifty two hundred you know it's better to get the better one then get the cheapest one and some of those claim that they can give you know for example if you have something run at 75 watts it may run 90 minutes and the reason going to the next aspect of uh, off-grid media the reason for nighttime power lies in affordable data for example you know there's a period before I got my land that I was parking on the uh, National Forest waiting for the land to close and you know I was still doing my uh, my day job for my associates website you know maintaining the news over there and to do that you know I'm looking at a hundred dollars a month I was paying a hundred dollars a month for 10 gigs and sometimes I had to pay more if I accidentally used that data or if you leave a CNN page open or a certain page open, you know where they have the ads automatically running that's all taking data from your prepaid device you know essentially ripping off the person that's using the prepaid device it's it's pretty fucking bad it's bad Verizon's bad I'm not even and, and we all know that so I don't even need to go there so that's another reason how they keep people in the grid is affordable internet a lot of people need their Netflix they need their uh, you know they need a certain I mean, broadband and data for their gaming you know for what I do I can produce the videos which doesn't need any data and I can upload them during periods in which the data is more is more abundant and so the plan that I'm on now is not HughesNet I'm actually with an alternate company it's great and I'm glad I found out about this company and I didn't sign up with HughesNet for the second time because they are somewhat of a ripoff you know this plan yes I'm I'm looking at about a hundred dollars per month also same thing as Verizon but instead of 10 gigs it's 15 gigs and the the midnight to 5 a.m. period is free so what I've decided to do is build a whole plan around this to you know for the first time ever I'm gonna be off-grid and coming to you on a regular basis in the winter you know and it's gonna be um, it's gonna be more productive it's gonna be more effective I mean even charging my setup with a not going from place to place and being able to pull the generator out you know and use the Sun you know and so yes I can use more batteries you know really I could I could easily use two more golf cart batteries because you really need a, a hook up in series from what I've been told so you know the next step up not go from 12 volt to 18 volt but two more I guess 24 volt but even before I get to that point of affording that I'm actually gonna slow down I can't spend my last dollar and actually work with what I've got I just want to describe to the audience how easy it can be when you're on a budget you don't need ten thousand dollars <laughs> I think I've demonstrated that you know the solar panels that are on top of my RV I mean that was probably about five hundred dollars when that was purchased last fall and had a friend install it mount it on top and then we wired it charge controller a couple hundred dollars I think that was uh, left over from a previous project in Portland where I had that charge controller and the teardrop camper you know and then of course on Amazon you can go down the list and if you have a mailing address and some money even better <laughs> and so last summer when I was uh, rested resting and parked somewhere at a friend's the summer of 2015 before going back to Costilla County there's a few things that I purchased and I wish that I 
that I knew then what I know now. I would have not purchased certain things, ridiculous things that did not serve me, that had no purpose whatsoever in an RV, like an ice maker. I mean, come on, Alex. It wasn't even... <laughs> it wasn't even... Uh, the type of ice maker that you put into the car lighter. <laughs> it was just an ice maker. You know, I'm thinking maybe one day I'll have enough solar and I'll use... Check this out. This is how crazy it was. I'll use it for one of those... Um, what do they call those swamp bucket things to where the fan blows the ice so you have like a cheap air conditioner? I know. I mean, I mean, certain pipe dreams that I had back in the day, I'll, I'll admit. There's certain things that I, I wish then that I knew now uh, that, you know, it's important to know the product before you get it. It's important to know the power as well. How much power are your devices taking? Can you store it? A couple of people recommended recently that I just get more panels. And I'm like, I hear what you're saying, but I really think that 400 watts is enough. You know, really, from this point on, I, I think I need to look at additional power options. And I'm sharing with you things that may work for you. You know, some of these options, if you're able to plug in or charge with your car or plug it in, some of these units that run 150 or 200 would go great to run a computer for several hours or a modem for several hours and you can have several laptop batteries run the computer and then of course like I said uploading in the middle of the night so it can be done on a regular basis and the videos can be uploaded in a higher quality otherwise it's just not affordable <laughs> but we've really come a long way in conclusion you know, a lot of this stuff was a lot more expensive years ago, and I was actually told that the uh, the upload speeds are about to uh, expand, increase dramatically. This particular satellite company is about to launch a fresh satellite into space, I guess, next year. And and, and the World War III posturing, by the way, is posturing. It is part of the uh, the theater of war. It is scripted. So, it's not that war isn't on the horizon, it's that it's not happening tomorrow. So, I, I would rest easy with regards to that. And my attitude is we should use the internet for the greater good while we have the ability to use it. You know, not lose ourselves in the, in the abyss. You know, playing too many video games, watching too much YouTube or Netflix. But use the internet for something positive. And so we're at a crossroads. You know, never before have so many people been able to come to so many others for free on YouTube. Never before has it been so easy to start a WordPress site or multiple websites, you know, and have, you know, different audiences. And I'm working on cultivating. I'll be cultivating my different websites throughout the year. Different topics, one solar flares, one off-grid, one regarding geopolitics, one's my own website. Of course, maintaining my associate's website, you know, considering launching a video on-demand channel, producing it off the grid using solar. I'll look at wind power later. Next year, I'll look at growing my own food, you know, and, and get involved in that. Maybe another vehicle so I can transport the water. Of course, I can also harvest water legally in the state of Colorado, more containers, more ability to contain that water and use that water on the garden. You see, all these things are on the horizon. And my attitude is, if there was obviously some good luck or heaven forbid we say something divine that allowed the thing to begin with, or for me to find the land. You know, and, and to avoid some other negative situations, but to be here at the right place at the right time, then I'm going to try to move this forward. But I really want to describe to the audience that, yeah, there's a little bit involved in coming to you off the grid, you know, and, and having enough power to generate a 90 watt modem, for example. And uh, there are certain things that could, uh, that could help me do it a little bit easier, some upgrades. Uh, then there's, uh, of course, just grinning and bearing it and doing what I can with a gas generator for the here and now. But, um, you know, it, it's an exciting time to be alive and have access to this technology. I'm Alex Hansery. It's November 2nd, 2016.